Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer. Today what I want to do is show you a little bit of the differences between a cobbler shaker or a three-piece shaker and a Boston shaker. So here's a standard cobbler shaker. It's a little bit fancier in design. It's got a Bernier logo because they sent it to me for free. And it's called a three-piece shaker because it has three pieces. It has a lid. It has the top piece, which also doubles as a strainer, and it has your tin that you would use for shaking to put the drink in. Some products also will give you a measured lid that could be used for one or two ounces so that you can have an all-in-one solution, but that's not always guaranteed. And of course, you could purchase a cobbler shaker directly from AustinDrakes.com. This is the one we sell. Again, three pieces, not too complicated. Your strainer and your lid, your top pint. This is a little bit bigger than this one, so you can make a bigger drink. I think it's 28 ounces or... 30 ounces or something. So let's use this three-piece shaker to make ourselves a demo drink. We're just gonna use water because it's simple. So let's add our pretend drink here. It's, uh, we'll call it vodka. You build your drink in the tin, you add ice. Put on the lid. Put on the second lid. Now you can shake it. But if you've ever been to Longhorn, you understand that when they give you a shaker, the lid falls off when you pour your drink. So be careful if you're using plastic ones versus tin. Now, let's bust out our little cocktail. Oh, look at that lovely water. So that's a cobbler shaker. So what are the pros and cons of that cobbler shaker now that we've made that drink and we can experience what the problems are? Here's the first problem. So you can take the lid off and you can strain, but as you chill them, they become fairly solid to get off. And if you are lucky and you have one that has a thin or shallow bite, it won't lock too hard. But most cobbler shakers become nearly impossible to get off. You have to run them under some warm water. And that's because the tin changes its shape and its size as it gets cold. The metal is bound together until it warms up. So that is, that could be extremely frustrating and, and it's something that's shared across all cobbler shakers and you just kind of have to deal with it. They often tend to drip depending on the, the style. You may not have a good uh, nub or uh, edging on this so that it might start to drip down the side. And if you're making sweeter drinks, the sugars and the stickiness could kind of be a problem. Another fairly big issue that some people have expressed as a problem and why you usually don't see it at a bar is you can't see the drink being made. So when you're building the drink inside of the tin, you don't get to see the color, you don't get to see anything about that drink. So if you're making it for somebody else, it's kind of a mystery. And one of the other things that can sometimes be a bother, especially in the summertime, is your built-in strainer. This strainer tends to have just a bunch of little holes in it, and it strains ice and keeps it in there very well. But it also can get plugged up by drinks that require uh, or call for mint or basil or other products like that where this could easily get blocked up and you're building your drink and you got to keep shaking it trying to get those leaves out of the way so that you can build the drink. It's simple. It's not intimidating. Intimidating is a problem for some people. They're much easier to find in stores. Obviously, AustinDrakes.com carries them, uh, but pretty much every place you go carries them. All the big box stores, if you're buying a shaker kit, you'll find that they're all cobbler shakers. They're an all-in-one design, and this comes in handy when you're looking to purchase something and you just need a shaker, you don't know anything about it, you buy the shaker, you get all the pieces. You can get different sizes, small, medium, large. I sometimes use the small ones for making sour mix. You can find a lot of them with branding. You can find fancy ones like the ones we're, uh, I think we have on sale right now is the, the cobbler shaker that's dressed up like a pineapple. And you can get very large ones, and that's good if you're gonna be making lots of drinks for lots of people and they're all the same drink. The learning curve is super simple, and they don't usually break. Now let's build a drink with the Boston Shaker and see how that works out for us. Water. Ice. You put the top on. Give it a tap. Now you shake it just like you did with your cobbler. You crack it open. Ah, but wait. Now you need a second piece. You're going to need a regular four-prong strainer or a spring strainer or hawthorn strainer in order to, those are all great names for them, in order to make this drink work and hold back the ice. But once you do that, it works exactly the same. From a volume perspective and a dilution perspective, there's very little difference between a cobbler shaker and a Boston shaker. Don't let anybody fool you and say, well, this one makes a drink colder, or this one makes a drink that's less diluted. But there is one valid point to it, and we'll cover that in our cons of the Boston shaker. And that big one is that glass. 
First off, that glass could break. Now granted, most companies selling Boston shakers, like Austin Drake's, uses a reinforced glass. That way it's, it's stronger, it doesn't shatter when you change temperatures rapidly, but it's still glass. And that means somebody without any education who puts this tin on top and hits it really hard can break it. Breaking? and education on how to use it. Of course, I have a video on how to use a Boston shaker, so that shouldn't be a problem. There's also a thermal mass. This glass is going to suck some of the cold out of your beverage because it has a higher thermal mass. So it's going to make your beverage a little warmer. So yeah, maybe there's a slight dilution factor that could change using a glass on the end of your Boston shaker, but that problem can be ramified by using a tin. The kits that we sell at Austin Drake's have both options depending on what you want. The tin costs a little bit more. Which brings up another con. They tend to be more money. Not necessarily, this is $11.99. It's not that costly. You could find another website, buy a cobbler shaker for $15.99. You can get one with a logo on it that some reason costs more even though you're promoting for somebody else. It also requires three different pieces, which could all be sold separately or all be put together in a kit like we sell. But I've seen some reviews on some websites. Some people have given minus reviews because they bought a Boston shaker, they got this, and they couldn't figure out how to use it because all they did was buy a 28 ounce tin. This is not a Boston shaker, it's a 28 ounce tin. This is an 18 ounce tin. This is a 16 ounce pint glass. And that's a Hawthorne strainer. You're gonna need a combination of these. This works, but you still need the strainer. Otherwise, you're dumping your ice, so you're gonna have to hold it back with your fingers. Or if you wanna get cool and professional, you could do it this way. But that means more education, more intimidation, and a learning curve. So those are really your downfalls of a Boston shaker. However, yes, they look more professional. Yes, you can do cool upgrades and mixes and matches. If you want to get a powder coat shaker now and move to a polished tin later, or vice versa, those options are up to you. You'll also find this strainer clogs a lot less when you're building cocktails that have herbs and spices and other things. You have more surface area for liquid to pour out and you don't get as much clogging. They clean fast. If you know how to take them apart, they come apart really quickly. Quick to make cocktails and the turnaround times really fast. Easy to clean, ready to use again. Cobbler shaker, not so much. So you can take your pick on which one you like. When it comes to me, first off, I like to look cool. I mean, look, I'm wearing an MTV t-shirt, but I also am a huge advocate of things that are fast and clean. This is a super simple solution to clean, and it comes apart easy. That's all that really matters in my personal opinion. I don't like to fight with cobbler shakers. It's just not my favorite thing to do. But for you guys, that might be different, which is why options are always great to have. And if you want to click below, you can go to AustinDrakes.com and check out our bartender starter kit. I've got a variation that comes with a cobbler shaker with a few less tools to be more affordable, along with a boss shaker option that comes with a wider range of tools. Choose the tools that are best for you. Sidebar for more videos all about education on cocktails. That's it. We're teaching you how to drink.